My name is Ilko Sharo. I work for uh, Red Hat, and this talk is a little bit about um, the addition of AFXDP as sort of a data pad for uh, Open vSwitch. Um, it's not really going into the details what AFXDP is and does, but in short, it's a, uh, uh, an enhancement that will allow uh, packets to be sent directly to user space, so similar to DPDK, um, with the advantage it's a little bit more friendly, uh, so you can either uh, decide that you want the packets to be handled by the kernel um, and then send to, uh, to the user space, or you could actually say, um, I want the packets to be directly uh, sent to the kernel and, and, and do normal processing. Some other advantages in the OVS perspective, it's uh, purely a uh, user space application, so you don't have to worry about updating a kernel module, which sometimes makes it easier to do a quick change or maybe some uh, experimental phases uh, that you won't do. Um, that's what I have. So last year at the OVS conference, or about a year ago, uh, there was a presentation about AFXDP and how it actually was integrated in OVS. Uh, so that might be something if you would really like to see how the technical details of the implementation look like. That's a good presentation to watch. I put the, the, the reference there. Um, I think we can skip this slide or speed up. Um, but the main question always is, you know, is A of XDP faster than DPDK or is it faster than the kernel or vice versa? Um, a lot of people uh, ask that question um, and there's not much data out there that, uh, that show the differences. If you talk to the uh, AFXDP people, they say AFXDP is better or almost faster. If you talk to DPDK, they say they are always faster. Um, so what we tried to do uh, is do an um, a, a apples to apples comparison between the two or between the three different data paths uh, and see what, he is, what the differences are. Uh, what I did in this specific uh, example is that we used the PVP test suite. Sorry, can you just speak up a little bit? Because the guys in the back have okay. hearing. Okay, I tried to <laughs> talk a bit faster. Uh, harder, not faster. Um, so what we did, we used the OVS Perf uh, test suite. Uh, there was a presentation for me about it last year, I think, also here. Um, and also on the OVS conference. Um, it's a PVP test uh, where we send packets through the... Uh, uh, to a virtual machine through a physical port and then back out on the same physical port and then we measure the performance on that. Um, for this, we also uh, task the physical to physical port uh, just to make it easier uh, because then you don't have the uh, overhead of the virtual machine so it might be easier to spot the, 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 the delta differences. Um, we use uh, open flow rule with the normal action which means just bridging uh, between the ingress and egress ports or the ingress and egress ports of the virtual machine. Um, we try a couple of different uh, packet sizes and uh, a couple of different number of flows. And the flows are based on five tuple uh, variations uh, in the test. Uh, I have no latency tests in this uh, thing, so there is no comparison between latency for DPDK versus AFXDP versus the normal kernel data path. So what will we compare? Uh, so there's a couple of different flavors. Uh, there is the uh, pure kernel data path, which is a kernel module for OBS that does all the, uh, the data path processing. Um, we use AFXDP uh, with a tap interface into the virtual machine, because that's the normal, uh, the default case from a kernel perspective. Um, then what we also try to do is we do uh, AFXDP with the vhost implementation from uh, DPDK, uh, just to see where the bottleneck is there. Um, then of course, most people would like to see is the AFXDP versus the DPDK implementation of the data path. Um, and then uh, also there is a AFXDP PMD in DPDK. So we try to compare what's the difference if we use that PMD versus the native implementation of AFXDP. And there were some differences there as well, surprisingly. Um, so some of the results, some of the numbers. Um, it's probably a bit small for the people in the back to read. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll walk through it. So this is a, a kernel version, so the kernel data path. Um, we have uh, the different colors are the number of flows. And then you see the more flows we have, uh, the more performance we get from like 1 million packets per second for a single flow, up to 8 million packets per second in the reference uh, architecture that I use for the test. Um, but what you can see here is the CPU utilization. Is this pointer working? Roughly, oh, there you go. So the, the CPU usage is the difference because it uses the queuing mechanism of the kernel. So if you do one 
um, one, um, one flow, you can see you roughly use uh, one core uh, of your system. And if you see, if you increment the number of flows, you start to use more uh, CPU power because you get a distribution over multiple threads in your system or multiple cores in your system and the performance hicks up. So it looks nice. You know, you can do 8 million packets per second on the, on the kernel data path, but you have to take into account that is using about nine, eight to nine cores just for packet processing as a total. That's what I tried to show here. So this is the, the physical port in and the same physical port out, so just looping it back into the, uh, the system. This is the same thing uh, for the uh, virtual, machi virtual machine in the picture. So packets go to the virtual machine and all back out of the physical port. Um, here you see that uh, a single flow is a bit faster, and I think that has to do with caching, uh, but I haven't figured out the details yet, so that's still a thing where I would like to figure out why it's faster. Uh, but you see you get about 0.6 million packets per second um, but you see the same uh, usage of the CPU. It even gets higher uh, because the virtual machine also uh, needs some extra CPU power because you basically have two interfaces that you're, that you're pulling in this scenario. Um, so this is for AFXDP. So the same test, but you use AFXDP as your data path in this ex example. So physical port to physical port. Um, here you see that the single port is faster. Um, a single flow is faster, but it's roughly around 3.5 uh, million packets per second. We do a comparison a bit in the next slides between the two. Um, but you can see that for all the number of flows, the CPU usage is sort of stable. Uh, you get your, uh, here you can see your PND thread. So your PND thread is roughly 100%, which in the user space data path is always pulling the PNDs um, because it's a similar implementation as for the, um, uh, as for the DPDK side. But you get additional CPU resources because the, uh, the kernel also needs to pull the, 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 the XDP part, so it needs to pull the driver. So your total CPU utilization is roughly about double uh, in this scenario. But at least it's, the number of flows is not depending on it. Uh, the vhost interface, uh, so the PVP test, you see the same, you get about 800.8 uh, million packets per second. Uh, the flows are roughly the same. Uh, the CPU utilization is higher uh, because you get the PMD thread about 100%, and then you get 100% for the virtual machine pooling the, um, the, the vhost queue, and then you get 100% for the hardware NIC to be pulled as well, um, and then some overhead from Quemu that is actually doing the uh, interrupt uh, handling. So out of all these tests, or the different tests and the different frame sizes, um, I picked out one so we could compare the results rather than trying to compare all the possible frame sizes and the possible flows. So we took the medium, which is the 100 uh, uh, streams with the 64 byte packets because that's most of the people would like to reference against 64 byte uh, small packets. Also because in that scenario, um, we're not filling the pipe. If we would take a bigger packet, we would fill the pipe and we don't really see when the, where the bottleneck is if we want to compare them. Um, and then we use the PVP test because it's more of a real life scenario where you actually go to a virtual machine and then you go back. So doing that for uh, AFXDP versus the kernel, and I have to apologize that the, the scales are not the same on both graphs, so it's not, uh, you cannot compare them one by one. Um, let me get the numbers. But at least you can see here that uh, from a performance perspective, you get about 0.8 uh, 8 million packets per second on, the, uh, on AFXDP versus uh, a little bit more, roughly maybe 5.6 million packets per second. Um, so you would say it's, it's a bit slower, uh, but also you have to look, take into account the CPU utilization. Um, and you can see here that uh, this is basically what is, is used for the PMD, which is always 100% uh, on the AFXDP part because it's constantly pulling packets already. Um, the virtual machine, of course, the gas, it uses 100%. And then you can see the remaining part of the CPU that is used um, on this scenario. I cannot really read it there, but I can see it here. Um, so the system is using a lot of the CPU, additional CPU power, about 200%, just to uh, pull the two, uh, the, DP, the, the two XDP drivers, and then there is a little bit overhead from Quimi, um, you know, doing the interrupt handling on. 
Um, so the conclusion is it uses a lot less CPU power. Well, maybe I should show the CPU for the kernel because that's not on scale, but it's still about almost 10 cores, additional cores that is used to process the packets. Uh, for that. So, oh, wrong side. so it uses way less CPU. There is more throughput. Um, and there is no kernel, de kernel module dependency for AFXDP. Um, so the, the, the good part is that uh, on this side, uh, sorry, the, the bad parts are um, it's not a full feature. So the features compared to DPD, uh, DPDK or user space and the kernel is less. Um, so there are some features missing, including QoS um, egress policy. Um, and there is some, some uh, design which is also there for DPDK is the way that if you send traffic from in from a kernel module, from a kernel interface into DPDK or AFXDP, it needs to bypass. So you need to, you know, your packets take longer to, to process. Um, so this is the same data, and I'm gonna go through it a bit quickly. It's the same data for the physical port uh, for the DPDK. So you get about roughly around, was it a million packets per second? Uh, sorry, 10 million packets per second on the physical port. For the PVP, it's roughly 2.5 to 2.8 million packets per second. Um, so DPDK uses the vhost user uh, as the interface to the virtual machine uh, because uh, DPDK and vhost are both um, user space data path and OBS. They can be mixed. So in this scenario, the uh, vhost user is also the DPDK vhost user is used in this scenario to, uh, to, to loop back the packets, so you get the better performance. Um, it's a roughly about 1.6 on average for 100 flows. Um, so if you compare them, uh, you can see that the, the DPDK, um, let's see. oh, no, this is not DPDK. So this is the comparison between the XDP using a tap interface to the virtual machine versus a vhost. Uh, interface to the virtual machine. You can see the, the difference. It's about uh, 0.8 versus uh, 1.6 million packets per second. So roughly a double the speed if you have a different interface into the virtual machine. Um, from a CPU uses, the, it's roughly uh, the same, um, except because you have only one uh, XDP interface, you, your CPU uh, usage for the other, for the vhost part is totally taken into the uh, DPDK uh, PMD threads CPU utilization. So you would only have the additional XDP, but not the vhost. Um, so conclusion, so the vhost uses less CPU power, uh, the throughput roughly doubles, um, and you have a constant CPU inter uh, usage if you increase the number of virtual machines in that scenario. If you add more XDP physical interfaces, then you, of course your CPU utilization will increase, but not that. Bad part is that you need to set up DPDK infrastructure. So you need to set up your huge pages uh, and you need to set up the, the DPDK uh, memory assignment as well. Um, I think this is the one people like to see most. It's the AFXDP versus the DPDK. So what is the performance gain there or the difference? So as you can see, it's like 1.6 million for AFXDP through a virtual machine where it's about 2.75 million um, so the, the delta on this is roughly, I guess, if I calculate already, 1.6 1. 1. or something uh, times faster in that scenario. So DPDK is still faster if you, if you take a normal use case scenario. Um, but what is, what is the, the main advantage? So the CPU power is less uh, because you actually know what's going on uh, in, the, in the thing. Whatever you reserve for the P and D threads, is what you have. So if you reserve one PMD thread, your CPU utilization will be max 100%, independent on how many ports you add to it. Uh, whereas for AFXDP, you add the additional CPU usage for the um, XDP. So your your, your driver, uh, you'll use roughly double the CPU of the CPU power there. Um, that's it. Oh, so roughly 1.6 times, like I said. Uh, need to set up uh, DPDK. You have to have PMD drivers that might not be uh, up to speed, up to spec with the latest version. So if you have your kernel drivers, that might be might be better. Um, and you cannot use XDP steering, so you cannot put an XDP program there that say, okay, maybe some of the packets I would like to be handled by the kernel, and the rest should be go to OBS. Um, 
going a bit faster because we have only five minutes left. Um, so the same thing for uh, AFXDP, but using the DPDK PMD and not the native implementation. Um, I'm just going to click throw it through. People can watch it. Uh, the thing is that the AFXDP PMD is a little bit faster, uh, where you would expect the other way around. Um, the the reason is that the, um, with the AFXDP PMD, um, they they use they reuse the buffers. So when you send something from one port to another port. You, you use the same AMBUF for transmission, so you don't copy it. Uh, in the current native implementation, when you copy something to a different egress interface, it actually copies the entire buffer. So there is a buffer copy for every packet transmitted. Um, and that is one of the, I have some future items here, that's one of the things that's still being worked on. So we have a shared UMAM between the different interfaces. Um, uh, and then there are some kernel work for, for trying to get uh, a native uh, zero copy support there as well so that we can bypass. Um, there were some people thinking about having our own VHOS library for AFXDP rather than use the DPDK one. I'm not really a fan of that, but uh, I think someone's researching that. Um, there is currently no egress QoS support, um, but we can probably use, reuse the DPDK library to support that. But we have to see. But that requires you then to link DPDK to the project if you if you might not want that. Um, and then this is some other stuff that is. I think the the, the lower two ones are already in uh, the master branch at the moment. Um, and the other thing that we need to look at is some CI testing of the the whole stuff integration. Um, I think we can break that. Uh, so the conclusion. So we didn't compare latency and. Um, we also didn't do any multi-queue in the examples to see if that will speed up even more. Uh, so that's still something that needs to be done. Um, so where does this, the, the speed comparable sit? So A of XDP is somewhere in the middle, so it's between uh, XDP and DP, sorry, it's between the kernel and DPDK. Uh, it has the advantages of that you can keep the kernel driver, so it may be a little bit easier to set up. Um, but if you still need the additional throughput, you, know, you might want to go and set up DPDK in that example. Um, and the other thing, your kernel needs to support A of XDP. So some of the kernels in the distributions don't have it yet, so you might want to you know, still uh, put into a, use DPDK. Okay, that's it. Any questions? I think we have one minute left. Oh, I can. Okay, okay. So perfect. Any questions? We have extra time. All right, thank you.